This has got enough fruit, but it has like these mineral stony type flavors that you're usually not going to get white wines at this price point. Super good. Super good. My name is Matthew Horky. For the last six years, I've been traveling around the world tasting thousands of wines per year in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. But today, we're tasting Costco wines all under 15 bucks a bottle. Costco is actually the largest wine retailer in the United States. And they plan their selection, so it's almost like a treasure hunt, so you're always finding new things. If you want to learn a little bit more about their business strategy, check out my friend's book, Money, Taste, and Wine. They already have a large consumer base. They have people that are there to shop, to look for value, so it's already a tailor-made market when it comes to wine. And you know what? They have some really good stuff there. They even have more premium, more expensive wines, but the majority of selection are everyday type of wines. And I was pretty impressed with the wines under 20 bucks, so I tried to go even lower than that. Under 15. Let's see if I could do it. I'm going to be tasting with these wonderful glasses. Uh, I found these on Amazon called Rovsia. They're supposedly hand-blown. These are some of the best inexpensive glasses that I've used. These are supposed to be burgundy glasses, but really reminds me more of kind of the Rito Grand Cabernet glasses. I'm going to put a link in the description box below. A lot of people ask how they can support the channel. Checking out these glasses can help quite a bit. Let's get started. First up, we have a Costco branded wine. This is the Kirkland Signature, a Solo Prosecco Superiore. People always like bubbles. This is $6.99. A lot of people don't realize but Prosecco is not the name of the grape. Prosecco is a region in Northern Italy. Sparkling wines from Prosecco are actually made from the grape Glera. Prosecco is known as kind of a fun, non-fussy sparkling wine, although there can be some really serious examples. $6.99, I'm not expecting a ton. Let's see here. It smells like green apple, a little bit of white peach, lemon. It smells pretty simple. Bubbles look okay. Let's give this a go. Some Proseccos can have a little bit of sweetness. This is bone dry. You gotta like lemon juice. You gotta like the gotta like the stuff that'll make your mouth water a little bit. $6.99, it's okay. Is it getting me super excited? Not really. Eh, I think it's a little bit meh. Eh. Next up, two whites I'm actually really excited about to drink. This is the Argiolis Costamolino. This is the Vermentino di Sardegna, 2020, $11.99. Sardinia is the island in the Mediterranean right off the western coast of Italy. In non-COVID times, I'm usually there a few times a year, actually judge at a, at a Vermentino competition in Sardinia. And here's a hot tip. If you're looking to find high quality value for money white wines, look for grapes that you're not familiar with. Get out of the Chardonnays, the Sauvignon Blanc. In Italy, there are hundreds of unique white grapes like Vermentino. Make really delicious wines. I've been to this estate several times, wonderful estate, they do a lot of good work with all types of grapes. Let's give this a hair a go. And it smells like Vermentino. And when I think about Vermentino, I think of number one, pineapple. I think of sage, kind of a thyme, a little bit of lemon, some natural glasses. It's quite complex for an $11.99 bottle of wine. I like Vermentino de Sardinia because it has acidity, but not enough where it really can be too off-putting or too sour for more casual wine drinkers. This is just simply a good everyday white wine. Super highly recommended. $11.99, you want to try something different? Vermentino di Sardinia, Argiolis, nice job. This is something that you can drink on its own. It's going to go great with clams, shellfish, any kind of baked fish. Oil-based pastas, white pastas, really good stuff. I I'm a big fan. Nice. Next up, we have a wine I'm super excited to try. This is the Baden Horse Family Wines Chenin Blanc, the Cicadas. This is Chenin Blanc 2020 from South Africa. Chenin Blanc in South Africa is also known as Steam. Comes with a nice little screw top. I'm not scared of screw tops. I love them actually, especially with wines usually today are meant to be drunk a little bit younger. Why deal with the corkscrew? Just the screw cap is fine. Chenin Blanc, a grape from the Loire, makes some fabulous wines. Wines from Vouvray are probably the most famous out of Chenin Blanc. Although South Africa has a lot of old vine Chenin Blanc. This says it's 40-year-old Chenin Blanc, and this is $10.99. Again, go with a white grape that you're not as familiar with. You usually get a higher quality wine and something that's quite unique. If you like Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc is going to have some of those same characteristics. Uh, some yellow peach type notes, pineapple. It also has some lemon. This smells really good. It smells really complex. Lime guava type flavors. 
This is one of the more impressive, inexpensive white wines I've had in a long time. Gotta like acid. Gotta like sourness. I think a lot of people in general are gonna go more towards that Vermentino. But for my palate, this really makes my mouth water. This is really complex. This is delicious wine at $10.99. South Africa, AA Badenhorst. Wow. Highly recommend. Gotta like acid though. Gotta be, gotta like lemon juice, gotta like lemonade to like this wine, but wow, this is good. I don't even have a sip. This has got enough fruit, but it has like these mineral stony type flavors that you're usually not gonna get white wines at this price point. Super good, super good. Now on to reds. We have the Poly Wine Company, Huntington, Santa Barbara County, Pinot Noir, 2018, $13.89. I've been to the tasting room. This, I think it's in the funk zone in Santa Barbara. And I'm really surprised that this wine was $13.89. If I remember in the past, I thought this was more expensive wine. So I don't know, on paper, it sounds pretty darn good. You know, like I've talked about in past videos, I'm usually not a huge fan of inexpensive Pinot Noirs, but uh, hey, let's give this a go. It smells like Pinot Noir. It smells a little bit like a denser Pinot Noir. More cherry juice, uh, a little bit more of a baked strawberry type flavor. Just a little bit of earthiness. Not done, it's more fruity than earthy. It's spicy. A lot of people that fall in love with Pinot Noir like more earthy, more perfumey types. It's a little bit fruity, a little bit bigger. It's not overripe, not overbaked. It's just a little bit fruitier. However, the quality of this wine acts to me more like a $25 wine than a that wine that's $13.89. If you're a Pinot fan, that's a big win. Recommended. Next up, a producer in the Northern Rhone that I really like. This is the Delas Cote de Rhone Saint Espirit 2019, $10.99. I'm super excited to taste this. During COVID time, one of the first restaurants I actually went to when the world kind of pried open a little bit in 2020, uh, one of the servers opened a Delas Hermitage on oh, that wine I thought was so good. Delas is a producer in Northern Rhone, a region in France known for wines that are a little bit more expensive, a little lower quality. Delas does a good job at keeping their prices down. This is mostly Syrah with a little bit of Grenache. A well-made Cote de Rhone are some of the best values in red wine in the world, in my opinion. I remember when I didn't know much about wine. I was out in the day, didn't know anything about wine. I asked the server, I said, I want some Cotes du Rhone. <laughs> server looked at me, said Cote de Rhone. So if you're a server, don't make your customers feel like assholes. When it comes to buying high quality Cote de Rhone, you wanna go by producer, you wanna ask the shop you know, what they think. Cote de Rhone's in the Northern Rhone are gonna be mostly Syrah based. Ones in the Southern Rhone are gonna have mostly Grenache. Beautiful nose of strawberry, earth, pepper, a little bit of smoked meat. Super complex for their wine that's $10.99. These two wines, the Les Pinot Noir, are similar profile. The Delos is gonna be a little bit more drier. It's a little bit more in my style, has some more nuances. The Pali Wine Company is Pinot Noir is a little bit more fruity. I really like the Delos. It is just bone dry, so something that you gotta know, but this is definitely more my style than the Pinot Noir. I think this is exceptional bottle wine at $10.99. You're getting wine from a pedigreed producer, a well-known region, uh, Syrah, Grenache, just a wonderful wine. Good wine for the barbecue, good wine to just sip on on its own. Just with just nice red wine, Stuff, something that's fun, makes you really wanna drink and have another glass. Next up, a wine from one of my favorite grapes, maybe my favorite red grape in the world. This is the Contessa de Rada Chianti Classico Reserva 2016. This is $13.89 for a Chianti Classico Reserva. When you're looking for great Sangiovese, and especially Chianti, look for something that's Chianti Classico, not just standard Chianti. Chianti Classico comes from a smaller area. Generally, the wines are of higher quality. Reservas generally are supposed to be better wines than the standard Chianti Classico Normale. They're aged a little bit longer, supposed to use better grapes. This is made by a cooperative. I kick and scream about the quality of cooperatives in Europe. More than 50, 60% of the wine produced, bottled in Europe is actually made by cooperative wineries. A lot of these growers have old vines, uh, really unique grape, for, grape varieties, and they cover almost every well-known region in Europe. The smell's Italian. I have to say, on the nose a little bit, when I'm looking for Chianti Classico, I'm looking for a little bit more freshness. This wine smells a little bit tired. It smells matterized, and what I mean by that is the fruit isn't fresh anymore. It becomes, smells almost like a marmalade, kind of like a jammy fruit. 
Still, it has that, you know, kind of rustic Italian charm that I like. Black cherry mushroom, a little bit of stink, a little bit of manure, which I kind of like. Palette's a little bit fresher than I was expecting. I was really excited about this wine, but uh, I think you can do a lot better uh, Chianti Classico, even if you just spend a little bit more. It's an okay wine. It's not going to be a crowd pleaser because it has some of those odd earthy toads, some of those manure, some of those barnyard type flavors not everybody's going to like. The tannins are a little bit aggressive, a little bit tough, kind of make, kind of strip your saliva a little bit. Not a crowd pleaser by any stretch. Yeah, not, 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 not super great. Darn it, I wanted that. I was looking forward to drinking that wine. Darn it. <laughs> Next up, we have the, the Luiteja and Vinos Vertes, which is old vine from the Duro. This is the Reserva Especial Tinto 2017. This wine was $14.99. The most expensive of the bunch from the Duro in Portugal. The Duro is where port is made. If there was a contest for the most beautiful regions of the world, the Duro might win amazing slopes, terrace slopes, vines as far as the eye can see. The Duro River is winding. It's just a beautiful place. Red wines in the Duro made from grapes like uh, Tariga Nacional, Tariga Franca, Tinta Chao, Tinta Joris, which is actually Tempranillo, and a slew of other grape varieties. In general, Portugal just has, it's such an incredible place. The wines are incredible. They're inexpensive. Sometimes I look at the prices and I'm like, oh my gosh, how can the wines be so cheap? And they're really friendly to the American palate. They're usually a little, bit, a little more darker, a little more richer, a little more fruitier, a little more concentrated. Let's give this a go. The wines from the Duro generally are more expensive than other parts of Portugal because the slopes are so steep it's expensive to work the land. $14.99, that's a pretty darn good bargain if this is a good wine. Smells like the Duro. Strawberries, uh, black cherry, earth type flavors. Sometimes Portuguese wines on the nose to me can resemble Italian wines. A little bit of pepper. And what I like about this is fruity, but it's just not all fruit. There are some earthy notes to it, too. It's peppery. It's fruity. It is dry. So you got to know what you're getting into on that. But overall, for wine from the Duro, especially if you want to try some unique grape varieties, like I said, Torriga Nacional, Torriga Franca, uh, Tinta Chao, that type of stuff, I think this is a wine that you definitely should seek out. $14.99, it's not going to break the bank. I think it's really nice. Red meat wine, definitely. Costco does offer a lot of nice wines in the under $15 price point. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a good bottle of wine. And that's what's cool about Costco. So whoever Costco's buying team is, good job. Kudos to you guys. There are a couple wines here that I wanted to like more than I actually did. If I had to pick a white and a red that are my favorite, I think for white... This Baden Horst uh, Family Wine Chenin Blanc 2020. I think this was actually the best wine in the entire tasting. Excellent wine for $10.99. And just for my palate personally, I like the Cote de Rhone and the Delas. Not everybody's going to like this type of wine, but for me, I really love it. These are the two winners. So let me know, do you buy wine from Costco? What price point are you sticking to? Let me know in the comments below. And you know what? I'll see you guys soon.